What up, Alyssa? How are you going? Hi, how are you? Good. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks for the, taking the time. Yeah, of course. I am super excited to be here uh, and talk with your amazing, wonderful, beautiful audience. Let's talk about organic content. Wow, this is really great. Yay. Um, actually, first, obviously, we need to hear a little bit more about what you do, how you show up in the world. Do you want to do a quick intro? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I am Alyssa J. Dillon. Um, I have a background as a CFO, moved into building a finance business, and I was very successful at that, realized and fell in love with organic marketing and content and attraction marketing. Um, so I started teaching people how to do that simply because they were asking me all the time how I was doing it. So um, pivoted there and I have been doing business strategy and organic marketing uh, since late 2018, early 2019. So um, it feels like I've been doing this for 10 years, but really I'm still a baby, right? It's, it's only been a, a few years I've been doing this. And um, yeah, that's what I do now. And I, I work with clients who are usually like B2B, business to business. Um, they are either marketing agencies, uh, accounting professionals, um, coaches, consultants. Those are course creators. Those are the people who usually end up working with me. And I show them what I have done to build a business that's doing uh, a little over half a million today. And it's a lot of freaking fun. So is that all organic marketing? Yeah, yeah, all organic. I, um, I, so I, I will say I've run some ads here and there to try it. I've never found a consistent ad strategy that I fell in love with. So um, I actually haven't ran ads for about four months now at all. So it's kind of like when I want to do it, I do it. I might try again in January, but for the most part, um, my revenue comes in through uh, organic. Paid advertising, and yeah, we'll talk about this a bit more later, but I think paid yeah. is, is and should be for most of these types of businesses supplementary to any, mm -hmm. all the organic marketing. People can make six figures with organic marketing all day long before they even think about doing paid ads. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my second, so last year, last year was my first full year in business as a uh, business strategist as a coach like I did my it was January to December right and we did 250k and I never even considered running ads right so this is my first year um, starting to touch on it and in and truthfully um, of course my kids are going to be in the background truthfully uh, you know I have struggled to come up with a a real strategy on ads that I have fallen in love with. So, um, so organic is always my, my fallback. And I have clients who have done seven figures already that have end up hiring me or reaching out to me because their ad strategy isn't working the way it used to. And they're, they're struggling. They're like, well, what do I do? I have this huge audience, but I don't even know how to sell to them now. Right. With ads, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. With ads, um, with ads, they have, they've been struggling. Like, so, so typically in my, in my experience, I have people who will, he'll, they'll have this like stellar ads campaign and it'll be running, running, running. And it'll be great. And then all of a sudden something happens, right? Something happens and it's falling flat. And now they have this bigger audience. They have maybe an email list or they have a, a Facebook group, but they haven't been doing anything with it. So all of these people who were considered warm leads are just going cold. So they're like, well, I need, and they'll say, you know, uh, so-and-so, my marketing agency told me I need to do more organic stuff to, to continue to nurture these people. So they forget that like, well, you have a list, but if, if on that first round, you don't get them to buy, you got to keep nurturing them. You got to keep talking to them. You got to keep building that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's um, so important to, spend your organic time nurturing them and like you can always do that like if your ads aren't working and actually ads change all the time right yeah hey, puppy yeah yeah dog, my dog, dog just alert. jumped into bed with me yeah love it dog alert <laughs> um ads ad strategy changes all the time things will start working stop working it's crazy you got to keep a lot of attention and money on that but organic marketing is always going to win because it's you communicating with your people 
organically. Yeah. You can change anything instantly. It's easy to update or fix things, but it's always the same. It's communicating with other humans, telling stories. Yeah. Um, and we're going to talk about some of those strategies. Hopefully they'll give us a few of your juicy tips yeah. Um, yeah. for organic marketing. Sorry. It's 2020. Okay. We're all in quarantine. Don't worry about it. I know. <laughs> Especially uh, here in New York State, we have been like on super lockdown, shut down. Um, so we've been home forever and ever, amen, it feels like. Mm -hmm. um, oh, but, you know, that's a whole, yeah, I got the kids home, I got the dog home, husband's here, everybody's here, and there's nowhere to go. I, unless <laughs> I were to do this stuff in my car. Um, I don't, I don't have anywhere to go. So, um, yep. We, we record podcasts and do all the things right here in my bed. Um, but this is why I built my business, right? That's a, that's a, another huge important part of this whole thing is this is why I did it. So I could record a podcast with you in my bed. So, <laughs> um, so, oh shit, I forget what I was talking about. Uh, no, you're fine. We were just saying that you can go back to, uh, organic when ads fail. Yes, yes, yes. So building relationships, like I just, we really, really um, emphasize to all of our clients and even in my business and to my team, uh, building relationships equals revenue. The more relationships that you genuinely build, the more real revenue you will create. And then there's a whole other part, another part of this, right? So you build the relationship, you ultimately have this revenue, but now you got to actually offer the results. So these are like these three R's. If we're talking about juicy tips, the three R's of business, every single business has to, has to have those three things. You have to continue to build relationships every single day. You have to continue to bring in revenue every single day. So what that means is selling every day, right? This isn't like, uh, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't want to sell too much to my audience in my content. It's like, well, I'm sorry, but if I went to the pizza shop, um, and they said, you yeah, know, we're not selling pizza today because we sold a lot last week. Like you'd be pretty ticked off, wouldn't you? Right. That's weird, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So we got to make sure we're selling every day. We're building, uh, we're building that revenue every day. And then finally that results piece, if you're not selling something that provides real results, those relationships will run dry, right? Because your reputation another great R word, uh, your reputation is going to go down, down the toilet. Right. And so we don't want that either. So, um, every single day, the main focus in a business for me and, and what I try to drive home to the people in my circle is, uh, relationships, revenue results, your business cannot operate every single day. If there is not a huge focus on them every single day. Right. That's a great framework. I really like that. Makes total yeah, sense. Thanks. Thanks. So, I made it up myself too. Yeah. I didn't even steal it from anyone. I love this. <laughs> um, so let me backtrack a little bit. You, you have a background in finance. How has yeah. that, I guess two things, how has that been really helpful for you in building this business and how can um, having a better financial understanding, yeah. two, two totally different questions, help other people to um, create their business? Yeah. So, so as much as like my background in finance and accounting has definitely helped me to grow my business. I think the biggest thing that's helped me is I come into being an entrepreneur with a whole other um, set of skills that most employees never developed before they went into entrepreneurship. So most people that start to be entrepreneurs, they didn't have the pleasure of being a CFO um, and when you work in a CFO role, everything's about high level. It's about the big picture, right? Um, and so I've had the ability to be more intuitive in entrepreneurship because I know how to run a business from not just a financial standpoint, but from an operation standpoint. I knew right off the bat that I couldn't have a business uh, without employees or without at least subcontractors. In the beginning, it was subcontractors. Now we have employees. But I knew that it wasn't going to just be me. I knew that the businesses I worked in that were successful didn't operate on the idea of one person having one skill set. I knew that I needed to bring other people in so I can focus on big picture items. I knew I needed to be doing advertising, marketing, um, and sales, where I think sometimes 
uh, if you ever read the E-Myth, he talks about this, um, of course, I can't think of his name. Well, I'm oh, sure yeah. we'll get that for you. We'll, we'll drop the link in the podcast. I'll have you do it. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> if you could do that for us. Um, but the E-Myth, if you have not read the E-Myth yet, as an entrepreneur, I would strongly suggest it because there's this idea of, of being an employee and coming in with a skill set and thinking that's all you need to have a successful business. Well, it's just not true. The skills are great, but ultimately you need to be working on your business and not in your business. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing I've been able to take away from having those previous roles, those high level roles as a, a person in finance. So when people um, are starting their business and they're a bit intimidated by all this financial stuff, that you obviously had a really great background knowledge of. Do you think that they need to spend a lot of time learning those financial skills or is there some type of like, um, shortcut or just things that you think, basic things you think people should know? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think um, obviously uh, pay attention to your finances. That's a huge part. I actually don't believe that you have to spend money to make money. Um, I do think money is energy, so it's you you shouldn't be living in a place of scarcity. Uh, you should be more in a place of abundance where if you do spend money, of course, it's going to come back to you. But I don't think it should ever come from a place of need. As far as like logistical, like tactical strategy on finance, honestly, like be smart and pay attention know what your revenue is, know how much you're spending. That's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. And if you are not able to really like figure it out and it is hard for you, there are so many resources out there. Um, YouTube videos, uh, there are coaches that help with this type of thing, right? I, I personally have coached many people who all they really help with is how like personal and business finances really intertwine and how to help you get financial clarity on where you are and just tracking it every single month. And honestly, just like you can use QuickBooks or wave or just about anything, but do I think it's a huge part in being successful? I wouldn't say 100% yes. Um, is it a huge part in being profitable? Absolutely. Uh, it's really nice to make a lot of money, but at the end of the day, if you don't know where your money is going, um, you're not going to feel the fulfillment of growing this, this massive business, right? It, it's just going to be like, well, what the heck? Like we made 30 K this month. We don't have any money in the bank. So what are we doing wrong? Mm -hmm. There's a problem there. And I don't, I don't, um, I don't operate on the basis that all businesses should be 100% profit. And I, I find that a lot of people, when they get into business, they're like, well, I don't want to hire anybody because that's going to take away from my profit margin. And for them, it's like, Oh, I don't want to have an expense. And it's like, I'm sorry, but what other business do you know that operates mm -hmm. on 100% pure profit? Cause I don't know any of them, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, McDonald's has overhead. Uh, you know, Amazon has overhead. Every business has overhead. So don't be afraid of it. Just know that investing in these things to get your business ahead is only going to help you in the long run. Obviously don't invest too early or too soon. I mean, I probably waited about three months until I brought on my first subcontractor um, and knew that I had some consistent clients and I had the ability to continue to grow. But uh, I didn't wait two years. And I know some people do that. They're like, well, I work 60 hours a week and I have no idea how to outsource anything. It's like, oh gosh, well, you've built yourself a dumpster fire of a business now because you got to figure it out and you're too busy to even consider training somebody, right? Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. A lot, of, um, a lot of times I see people that are way down the line and now they don't have time to, and they're also now really attached to how everything looks, right? I, I yeah. hired somebody within, within a month, I think. I was like, how can I get out of this immediately? And then every role, I have an agency, right? So every role I was like, I know I'm doing this right now, but I don't want to be doing it by the end of the week. Like, how can I get people? So I just push myself out of a role, grab a new one, push myself out of it, hire somebody for it. It's a really good point. Get yeah. out of it as soon as possible. And then, yep. and then yep. make you more money. You should not be doing everything. Yeah. 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 Just, just make more money. I know it's, it's kind of a scary thing to, to, to hear. It's like, well, I've made this 30 grand or whatever for this month. And now half of it is going to whatever expenses. 
and now I'm nervous for next month because if I can't make the money next month, you know what I mean? Like I'm screwed, you know? But I just think you will. You just make the money next month, keep building and scaling yeah. and using um, like free marketing methods, which, you know, is what we're about to start talking about, which is organic. More of that yeah. organic marketing. So you're talking about organic marketing at like a pretty huge scale, right? Generally? Yeah. Or because most people, it's like, oh, yeah, I post once or twice a week and I get a client every couple of weeks or whatever, and that's it. Oh, What's, oh there's yeah. people that are doing that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I am like, I'm the content queen. No. Um, I, yeah. So for us, honestly, what that looks like is um, I'm probably doing live trainings once to twice. Like, so live trainings, going live doing a training, offering some sort of quick result um, on those trainings. So that's super important, right? Like really make sure it. they can actually get a result um, from the training. And don't be afraid of giving away too much. People are, get so nervous about this. They're like, well, if I do a training on that, then why would anyone hire me? And it's like, because they'll never do it themselves anyways. Really, they're not going to. If they could do it on their own, they would have figured it out by now, right? Um, so it just, you doing that live free exclusive training for them is only going to help them understand who you are and that you actually have the ability to help them, right? If you keep all your secrets to yourself, nobody's ever going to learn that you have these amazing secrets or tips or tricks, right? So it's just like this podcast here. I give away my best stuff and ultimately it's going to drive more traffic to my page. And that's your guys's deal. That's what you got to do. So, um, we do probably one to two of those a week. Uh, and those I do personally, in my Facebook group, um, that's like my preferred platform. That's where I like to hang out. That doesn't mean that's where everyone should hang out. And if I can emphasize that I really want to, you need to pick a place that you love to hang out. You love to show up and go all in on that one place. This is not all the places. This is one place, especially when you're starting out. I just think those scattered efforts of trying to be omnipresent in the beginning mm -hmm. um, ends up with scattered results because you, you're, you're just learning who you are. There's so much to balance. Just go all in on one place, right? And you're going to see Preach. results. Yes. This is yeah. what I always say. People are like, oh, I need to be on Twitter and LinkedIn and TikTok and YouTube. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You can make a million dollars <laughs> just from Facebook. You know what I mean? Like yeah. put all your effort into the one thing. Cool, cool, cool. Do yeah. you said yep. five once or twice a week? Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, so I post every single day. Uh, I do a variety of posts. So I post what I call, um, some proof that I can help people, which is usually like screenshots of people's results that they've gotten me. There's a, there's a theme here, guys. It's results. So some of these screenshots of results that people are getting are things that they've said. Um, you know, somebody messaged me this morning and was joking around that I was going to have to hire another team member to filter all of the um all the messages she sent me because she she keeps like oh my gosh today i got another client oh my gosh today i got another client and she's like you're gonna need to hire somebody just to be able to take screenshots of all the wins that i keep sending you and so it like things like that like amazing results and just screenshotting that message she sent me and posting it super easy thing to do and honestly like the scrappier the better it looks real you don't have to make them pretty right um, and then, so I do, uh, content around, uh, what, what I call it like belief shifting, like your, your ideal client ultimately believes certain things about themselves or about their, their business. So one of these beliefs I might say is that there's a belief that you need to be on three different platforms to be successful. And so my job is to shift your belief. My job is to show you, no, no, no. Actually, the best way to do this is go in on one platform. And so in this post, what I might do is kind of talk through that, like why it's more beneficial, um, how you can start going all in, some things you could do, some tips, and then finally call to action. Um, so these shift, these belief shifting posts are really what elevate my content and what I teach my clients and how to elevate their content because if you present something that's surface level, so say like your typical 2018 value post, um, for those of you who aren't super familiar with content, like there's, there's an idea around this value post where you just show up and give value. Well, 
that used to work. But if the person reading your content already kind of knows like your top five tips, you're, you're at the same playing field with them, right? Like you're on the same level. If you can change their mind and make them see something they never saw before or have an aha moment, that's when things click. That's when they see you as the expert, right? And that's your whole job through content marketing is being seen as the expert and elevating your authority to them. So it's like, wow, she knows way more about this subject matter than I do, right? Uh, so finally, um, we do engagement posts. A lot of those engagement posts are really around business too. Um, I don't do a lot of the like, how do you like your eggs in the morning? Like it doesn't bring value to my page and my belief. I know people do this and it's fine. It's whatever. Um, but a lot of the engagement posts that I do are like, what are, what's your goal for 2018? Or, Hey, if I could show you how to get this type of result, would you be interested? Would you want to talk? Right? So things like this, getting people to raise their hand and always having my, my content drive back to my offer. So I think that's really important to note here. You want to make sure your content drives back to your offer. Um, sometimes we have this, this ability to just like rant on about just about anything. And then people are left confused. They actually don't know what to hire you for. Cause mm -hmm. it's like, if you're, if you're a business coach, say, so you're a business coach and you're talking about team building and you're talking about mindset and you're talking about sales. And then you talk about abundance and something else. Like then people are like, that's great. But what does she do? Right. So make it super clear drive all your content back to your one offer. So every post or what are you thinking? What do you think? So, so as far as like, when I, when I say drive back to your offer, I mean, not, not like physically uh, with like a link. I really just mean, make sure your content relates to the actual offer. So if you don't offer something related to um, mindset, as a business coach in your program, so you have mm -hmm. a program, if you don't offer mindset, I wouldn't do a lot of content around mindset, at least not on a big scale, maybe sprinkle it in here and there like once a month or if it's on your heart, but ultimately you want to make sure that that, that content is, is relating back because you don't want to get people on the phone that are like, Hey, I saw you that you've been posting a lot about team building. I need, does your program help me build my team? And I'd be like, no, I'm sorry, it doesn't at all. <laughs> like, I don't talk about that at all. So you want to make sure that you're not confusing your audience and they're not getting on the phone with you for the wrong reasons, right? That's really smart. There's, you know, when you get on those calls and someone asks you something that's, you know, a bit unrelated, it's so frustrating because you're mm -hmm. like, I fucking had this, you know, call booked and now I've got to sit here and have a conversation with this person that, you know, or if you're not really that into, you haven't, you're not far through your business, you're thinking, oh, maybe I should change and do some more team building stuff because that seems to be what people want to buy. You know what I mean? So people would change yeah. their focus completely just because they kept getting asked about all these different things. But mm -hmm. that's, that's really fascinating. I can see in my content where I've made some mistakes by getting a bit, not necessarily distracted, but getting excited about other things. So I only teach content, content repurposing organic content. And yeah. if I was doing some mindset stuff or different things, I can see how people would get a bit derailed and just yeah. like, what's she, what's she doing now? Should they, have, should they have a different offer or yeah, get confused and confused people don't buy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, like we're all guilty of it. I'm even guilty of it. I've confused my audience before. Um, you know, I've had people reach out to me and be like, can you help me with mindset? And I'm like, I can, but ultimately like, that's not, my whole gig. Like I'm not a, just a mindset coach. Mm -hmm. Um, I love motivating and inspiring people to take action on their dreams. I love that, but the action really is about organic marketing. I'm not going to like do any huge profound mindset work with you. Um, other than, you know, maybe talk you through like, well, why are you really doing this? And let's get clear on your why. So ultimately, you know how important this is to you. And if it's not important to you, you're going to figure that out, right? So um, yeah, we're all guilty of it. And I, I try to keep it in mind. I, I try to help my team keep this in mind as well, because if they repurpose some of my content, that's maybe older or something else. And I'm like, eh, it really doesn't have anything to do with our, our, our offers today. 
at one point, you know, I sold, uh, I sold some like little mini mindset courses uh, to help people with that. And so it's important to just like, whatever you're selling, make sure you, you drive back to that offer. Yeah. And so if, as far as offers go, do you reckon it's better to sell, you know, um, I've got three main offers all the time and occasionally mm-hmm. I'll, you know, discount one for something or I'll package them up a certain way or add, but there's really only three things, you know? So yeah. do you think that's the best way to do it? Or do you, you know, you said con- drive your content to offers, switching up totally different offers of just, you know, different things or just keep your same offers? Yeah. So you're catching me at an interesting time because I operated the first year of my business with one main offer and there was a downsell and an upsell Mm -hmm. my first year this year in 2020, it was the year of learning. And I got excited about the idea of doing different things and offering little mini courses and things on this. And I did, I did like this 30 day um, boot camp where it was, you wrote a piece of content every day in 30 days. Mm-hmm. I did, um, I did a program called uh, Unshakable and it was all around mindset. And I put that out in the beginning of March because mindset was going to be really important through the rest of 2020. And so while all of those things were really fun for me to do, um, ultimately I found there to be so much more hustle with continuing this creation mode. And I decided probably about, I want to say it's been about three months now to go all in, uh, go back to that, that platform of this is the one main offer. There's a upsell, there's a downsell, right? Mm. So you either can buy like a mini course. So my levels go, I have an ebook, I have a mini course. I have my big course that like my big program, it's a lifetime program. And then I have the ability to work with me one-on-one at a very high ticket. Uh, And there's obviously strategy around that. I can't fill my calendar with a bunch of one-on-one calls. Mm -hmm. So I have screaming kids all the time in the background. So um, I've had to do what works for me and what, where I get people the best results. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And I think you're, that's such a good point about the one, I forget who said it. It was in a book I read recently. It was like five different things. I'm not going to remember all of them, but it was like one offer, one year, one funnel, one traffic source. It was like only do these things, mm-hmm. just the one thing at a time. Cause I think people really get, you know, they'll build a course and no one buys it. So then they go, okay, I'll build this other thing. And not, you know, not really anyone buying that, but then they have the one-on-one and then they build a little $27 thing. And that's fine if you're bringing in a lot of cash or a lot of like you're having a lot of traffic and you have all these systems, you've been doing it for a long time. But if you're just starting out, that one offer is really key. I can see why you have success with that. Yeah. I, I am now the big believer in one program and everything is based on that one program. That ebook that I have drives to that one program. Like that mini course I have, it's a module out of my program my upsell for working with me one-on-one if you're already in the program and you want more handholding that is based on the one program it's really what it does is it it actually does make me the expert in one area versus people being unsure of what they should hire me for because i'm offering mindset over here and i i'm doing this over here and social media here and uh developing offers over here um And so I think it is kind of just once you establish that and then you establish, I guess what I'm trying to say is you establish who are this offer, but then you establish who is the best fit for the offer. Who's going to get the best results for your one offer. And that's when you kind of make that magic happen. Because if you know exactly who comes in and get the, get those best results, every single one of those people that are getting those results are going to go talk about you. Right. And so the more people that are talk, talk to you, you, you build those fans, right. Um, that helps you continue to build those relationships. So really going back to what we started this conversation on that offer is such a crucial part of it because if the offer isn't getting people results, then you're kind of left floundering and the, that well will dry up eventually. So, uh, That's part of the reason that I did go back to this model because I found with pushing out a bunch of different little courses and little things here and there, 
I couldn't track results as well, right? Like mm -hmm. somebody's doing like a 30 day boot camp with me. I have no idea what that looks like. Like I don't, the results aren't consistent with this bigger offer over here. If I'm really helping people in this lifetime program, it's trackable, right? And if people, people might come in the program, they're going to be with me. And people make more of an effort when they pay more. Go ahead. You know? People make more of an effort when they yeah. pay more. So if you they're doing a 30 100%. day thing and they paid a couple hundred bucks, they may fall out on day four or 12 or 16 or whatever. Whereas if they're paying a lot more and they're mm -hmm. doing one-on-one -on -one or they're doing a, you know, a higher level program, yeah, they're more likely to stay in and keep putting in the effort and get, you know, then you get to collect on yeah. those results. So yeah, absolutely. Go, going back to the mechanics a little bit, um, in terms of that variety of content you talked about, you mentioned um, what I call bridging content, which is, you know, testimonials, case studies, results. Mm -hmm. um, and then you mentioned belief shifting posts as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what other types of content do you recommend posting? Obviously there's normal you know, personal ones and businessy ones and stuff like that, but yeah. how, and how often would you post those? So, um, you know what, it, it, for those people who are on here and they're just starting out, do what you can um make it an attainable and achievable goal for yourself i think i think the one thing about being a business owner when we're first starting out i can relate it a lot to like weight loss like we think if we have this goal we're going to post every single day and then we don't post for a day and then we don't post for the second day and the third day and then we give up right we we we're like oh we're failing well there's no real fail at this. It's just keep going every single day. If you didn't post yesterday, post tomorrow. And there are certainly days where life gets away from me. And I'm like, shit, I didn't, we didn't even post yesterday. How is it even possible? Right. Um, I, but at this point I have a team of five people. Like if we didn't post yesterday, I am very confused on how between all of us, we didn't realize that we didn't post. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, if, and in the beginning, like if there was a day where you know, for my audience, especially, I happen to attract a lot of moms. Um, I have two young kids. If you have a rough day with your kids and you can't post, it is no big deal. Post tomorrow, girlfriend. Like, it's fine. So I say make a goal for yourself. I'm a big believer in every single day you put the message out, right? Because every day, single day, we want to make sure we're driving sales. So every single day, you got to let people know you're available to take their money, ultimately build those relationships every single day. Um, so, so I would say every day we typically post um, probably two to three times a day. I know some people like really emphasize posting six times a day. I've seen eight times a day. I haven't found that to be necessary ever. Um, I'm sure with more effort could potentially come more money, but also sometimes with more effort, it's just more effort and you're more exhausted and it's not aligned with happiness, right? If, if you're spending your entire day focused on, oh, I gotta put out six pieces of content today, um, that sounds exhausting to me. So I say set a goal with something that seems attainable and achievable for you. When I first started, my goal was to post five times a week. Um, now, like I said, we're doing two to three times a day and I'm happy with that. What do you think about, uh, I'm the same three. I think we do three or four times a day in, you know, on my profile and my group, uh, my page, that type of stuff. What do you think about like Gary V mm -hmm. who's like, you know, actually he said this the other day, like if I was starting out right now, I'd be, I, and I was like about to get on a platform, I would have, I would just be producing 50 pieces like a day, like 50 pieces Boom, yeah. boom, 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 all this content. I don't know if that screws up the algorithm for me in my practice. It really has not been helpful for the algorithm, um, which d it shows that it shows two posts of 40 of the 50 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. So here's, this is, uh, this is twofold. Number one, I love Gary Vee. Um, I usually tell people that I aspire to be the female Gary Vee. I, I curse a lot. <laughs> I love how blunt he is. He just tells it how it is. And honestly, that's like what I, those are the rules I live by. Like it basically, I think even since high school, people have said like, don't be friends with Alyssa if you don't want to hear the truth because I'm going to give it to you. Right. Um, so I love him. 
that is the one area where I completely 100% disagree with him because mm -hmm. there is no way anyone's going to be happy putting out 50 pieces of content a day. Now, if you're sitting here telling me that, Alyssa, I am so freaking broke. Um, I have no money and I'm about to foreclose on my house. I'm like, you best be putting out a ton of content and talking to as many people as you possibly can. If you have nothing else going on, that is your sole focus. Put out content. 50 pieces? No, um, not for me. But, you know, maybe that six to eight, right? Like that six to eight pieces of content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one more thing I want to ask. Um, when you say, like, you're putting out content, you're putting out content, I think a lot of times people put out content and then they're like, doodly dee, I'm just going to keep on putting it out and never really create, like there's a real step, like an extra step that's required to have conversations and build relationships. Yeah. Can you talk about that for a minute? Because I think people just wait for referrals or people to go, hey, I've yeah. got some money to give you. And that, that doesn't happen. Um, okay. So for me, just posting, like we call that post and ghost when you just make this post and you put it out there and then you actually, uh, you don't talk to anybody. It's like having a one night stand, right? So, but that's not our goal. Our goal is to have loving, lasting relationships, marriages with these people who become our biggest fans. So for me, it's post. And if somebody comments, you best reply back. Like, we make sure we reply to every single person who comments and whether it's me or my team, I'll be honest. It's not always me. I know that this is like, people don't like to hear that, but the reality is I have posts that get sometimes upwards of like 78 comments. Right. And so I can't possibly be doing that all day. I have a family that needs me as you've heard throughout this podcast. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, we, we make sure that we reply and, and continue to reply as long as people continue to talk from that. Usually if we're building a relationship or somebody's taking an interest in what we have to say, we take it honestly a step further. So that usually looks like, um, having a conversation, somebody saying like, Oh, I'm struggling with this, this, and this. And we're saying, Oh my gosh, yeah, that sounds so-and-so do you care if I, or I'm not even going to say that we message them, right? We go straight into messaging them and saying like, Hey, uh, you know, I'm just messaging you based on your comment on my post. I'd love to hear more about what you have going on. Right. And we start that conversation with them and really get into seeing if we can help them, if we can identify them as a ideal client in the beginning of that, that post. Um, that's never really the intention. I mean, it is the intention. It's always to drive people into having conversations with us, but it's always an added bonus when somebody actually identifies them as and raises their hand, we would say as an ideal client, um, where we can have that conversation, find out if it's a good fit. And I would say, if you're going to message people, uh, ask for forgiveness, not for, for permission personally is the way I go on it. And it's not to be, um, it's not to be a jerk or anything. I'm, I'm not really into DMing cold, but if somebody, I know somebody has been in my audience and they've been commenting and engaging, why would I not see if I could help them? Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do either of us a favor. If we continue to, it's like, again, let's go back to dating. It's like, if you have somebody that you're interested in and they're interested in you also, but you, neither of you ever say that you're interested in the other then that relationship, that bond can never actually truly form because you guys have been tiptoeing around it, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So, see if it, see if it's a good, a good match. And sometimes it's just not right. You might think you're interested in somebody, you get to know them, you have a conversation and then you're like, wow, yeah, not a person for me. No, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> I thought I liked you. You looked like somebody I would like. I decided I was wrong, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I add to that as well, like the, the art of the follow-up, a lot of times people are like, okay, well, they never answered my message. But I follow up sometimes eight or 10 times, not in an annoying way. Like once they respond, I have a real conversation. It's the same with email. Like yeah. uh, it's like, Hey, just wondering, cause I mean, people message me all the time. You know how the Facebook messenger inbox is it's gone in like, you know, a few hours. So right. um, you got to follow up and make sure, Hey, just bumping this is kind of my like standard 
Facebook message and bump or even email. Yeah. Right. Always follow up. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, we, we are, we operate on the premise that if, if we're, if we don't follow up, we're leaving money on the table. Like we got to make sure that we're following up with people and, and I know it can be challenging sometimes. Um, you forget how many people you have conversations with or like you scroll back through your messages and you're like, oh my gosh, I never followed up. It's never too late. Like mm -hmm. it's never too late. Um, I had somebody the other day, one of my clients realized that she kind of like ghosted somebody three months ago. She followed up with them and they became a client. They're like, oh, you know, it's been a crazy couple of months. I've totally forgot about our conversation, but yeah, can I get started with you in January? Right? Like, so it's, it's sometimes it's just as simple as, as that, even if it's been a long time. Mm -hmm, definitely. Awesome. Well, um, listen, we're going to wrap it up, but let's, um, I want to ask you where people can find out more about you, join presumably, presumably your group or. Yeah. Like yeah. So, uh, AlyssaJDillon.com, um, it's probably the first place to start. There are of course links there that you can join my group, which is uncensored and unstoppable entrepreneurs. We do some cursing in there. Uh, we talk about some uncensored things and talk about business a lot. And we do, like I said, those exclusive, uh, live trainings about weekly in there. So if you want to learn more about me, that would be the place to do it. Awesome. Thanks, Alyssa. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to go deal with these kids. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. Bye.